Genotype sample gameplay, come on back after the break. Welcome to the show, Board Game Reviews. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to the board gaming hobby, and this week we're looking at the board game of Genotype. Now, Genotype is a one to five player worker placement dice selection game that plays over five rounds, approximate play time is about 90 minutes. And in this video, we're going to show you some sample gameplay for the game itself. Now, if you just want to get a quick overview, a tutorial video to learn how to actually play the game or see my actual review of the game, check out the videos in the series. In this game video, we're just going to look at the game itself. So let's go and start the game up. We have a three player game set up and I'm gonna go through a complete game here just to show you, so you can see if this is a game that's gonna be great for you and your board gaming group. So the beginning game of Genotype, the basic idea of the game is players gonna be trying to build up plants, study their gene type, modify the gene types for all these to get the most amount of victory points by completing these plants. Every one of these plants that we manage to complete by manipulating their genes is gonna be worth a certain amount of victory points. Plus if we focus on our studies on the plant types, we can get additional victory points, plus any money we have left over is also going to be some additional victory points at the end of the game. Now, I have the game pretty much set up for a three-player game here. There's only one thing left to do, and that's the starting cards for all of our players. Every single player is going to start with a hand of three plant cards, and we're also each going to start with one single tool. Now, we're going to look at the hand of the three plant cards that we are going to start with for every single one of our players. We're going to pick one plant that we are actually going to plant. We're going to look at one plant we're going to discard, and then one plant is going to remain in our hand. Once that's done, we are ready to start playing the game. I have decided that the purple player is going to be player number one. That'll be symbolized by the spatula right here. And hopefully nobody uses a spatula on their garden. So let's say that's going to be symbolized by the digging tool or the shovel here. So we all are going to use the shovel to symbolize the first player marker. As we go through the game, the first player marker will be passing from all the players. But we're going to start with the purple player as player number one. So again, just to show you how the game plays, let's go ahead and look at all the cards every one of our players have so you can see exactly the strategies we want to start working towards. So starting with Purple Player, we see that we have three different cards right here. We have the gene type of this card, the gene types of that card, and the gene types of this card. Now unfortunately, every single one of these cards is worth exactly seven points. Now the points spread on these cards are sometimes lower around six, but they do go all, all the way up to 12 victory points. And so the cards you get, the more victory points they're worth, the harder it is to actually produce that card. So that's something you need to balance. So basically we have a whole hand of seven cards here that are very, very identical. So we need to look at the gene types that are available at the start of the game, figure out how easy these are, and basically decide what card we want to discard, which one we want to plant, and then which card we just want to keep in our hand for future actions on our turn. So I don't want this to drag out a lot because this is not a strategy video. The whole purpose of this video is just for you to see how the game of Genotype plays. As a matter of fact, if there's any updates or comments about the video or anything that you should know about, Make sure you check the actual YouTube comments for this video itself where I'll leave any additional information about any corrections or anything that goes on for about this game. Because like I said, this is all about the gameplay, not any deep strategy, just for you to see exactly how the game plays. So let's do this nice and quick and easy. We're going to keep this card and we are going to keep this card. Now the reason why we're doing this is because these two cards are four different gene types, which gives us more options when it comes to purchasing the dice. We want more options because the more options we have, the less we're going to suffer the randomness of fate. And randomness of fate is something that you don't want to suffer in a very good worker placement game where you're purchasing dice to get your different actions. So we're just going to make this super darn simple. We'll start with that plant that's going to be planted. This card right here is going to be in our hand. Now for every one of our players, normally your entire hand of cards is hidden from the other players. But for the purpose of this video, so you can enjoy the video and see the strategies evolving, I'm going to leave all the cards face up for every one of our players. That's going to make it so you can enjoy the gameplay a lot better and just see how the strategy of the games actually evolve. So we'll start with that card in our hand and we'll have this tool in our hand. And again, all the cards before, below every one of our player boards are going to be the cards in every individual player's hand. So I'll move this money up right here so it's not in the way for anything going on like that. Let's go ahead to the white player right here and we will see that we have six, we have a seven, and we have an eight. Again, one card we need to discard. Well, let's go ahead and just make this nice and quick. Let's start with a card that is actually worth a decent amount of victory points. This card will remain in our hand, and the tool we'll have is Dissertation. Dissertation is very nice. That'll save us money, and money is extremely tight in this game. But if you ever played any worker placement game, you know that resources are very tight. That's a common occurrence in a very well-designed worker placement game, and this game is no different. 
Finally, we'll go over here to the blue player who has three cards, each worth 10 points. So you can already see that cards that are worth a lot of victory points have a lot of requirements to get these cards into play and score them. While cards that are not worth as many victory points have less requirements to get into play. So that's kind of the balance of the game here. So we have a good spread of cards right here, but we do see that some gene types are harder to produce. Generally speaking, if it's two lowercase letters, and I'm not gonna get into the science of everything here. If you're interested in the science, this game actually has a wonderful secondary rule book that actually goes over the true science behind this. And it's actually very, very nice if you're interested in the science of genetics, the science of modifying genes, and the study of plants and crossbreeding and everything. That's actually pretty darn interesting and something you're interested in. Not gonna cover that too much. I'm just gonna go over raw descriptions of everything right here. So we're seeing that we have two lower letter R's, we have two lower letter F's, and two lower letter G's. Well, this card only requires three gene dice to go ahead and produce, and it's still worth a decent amount of victory points. You're gonna see how those gene types are really, really harder to get. There's basically a one in six chance that will show up, unless you use any dice modifications or anything like that that allows you to mutate the dice or modify them, and those do exist, but those are gonna cost us resources. And again, this is a worker replacement game. All resources are extremely precious. So having thought about that, we are actually going to discard this card. Now that may not be a great decision because it could be worth a lot of victory points, but we'll see how things go throughout the game. Now this game does use a lot of lowercase and uppercase letters. So I'm gonna do my darndest not to break out into Dr. Seuss ABCs when I say big F, little F. If you hear me humming, that's exactly what's going through my head. And any parent out there right now is probably humming the same book from Dr. Seuss because we all read it to our kids. Now the interesting thing about this game is this game is going to be played over phases. There's basically four phases in the game. The very first phase of the game is the working phase where the player is going to take turns in player order placing their worker action tokens across the board of the worker placement locations and also on their personal boards at the worker placement locations. Once we've gone through and done all of this, we are going to move on to the plan breeding phase where we are going to roll the dice and players are going to in turn order based on the actions they took on the worker placement board earlier are going to claim these dice in an effort to go ahead and breed these plants to score those victory points. After that, we're gonna to move to the upgrade phase. In the upgrade phase, the cost of all the upgrades are gonna be based on the current level on the abacus right here. Now the cost, every time one of these upgrades is purchased, that cost is gonna go up even further. And all the upgrades are gonna be purchased in reverse player order. So the purple player knows right from the beginning when it comes to buying the upgrades, they're gonna get the last chance to purchase any upgrades and they're gonna be the most expensive for them because every time an upgrade is purchased, it goes up in price by one value on the dollar. So that's something to think about for the purple player as our very first action, because like a good worker placement game, all the locations are very precious resources. First come, first serve. Now you're gonna see a lot of locations out here that can only be used in a four or five player game. And to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I actually took the time to cover these slots so I don't accidentally forget and use those slots up. But you're gonna see those locations out here on the board and I'm basically putting the cards out here to make sure I don't make that mistake, but understand that some of these locations are only available in the four and five player game. So that does mean a lot of these locations are very, very precious resources. In some locations, there's only one of these locations, meaning that they are first come, definitely first serve. So basically what I'm saying in a very long-winded way is that money is something we want to get for the purple player because when it comes to getting the upgrades, we're not going to have a lot of options to do so because everybody else gets to go before us. But once we're done with all the upgrade phase, we're gonna move over to the end of round reset phase where any cards not purchased are going to disappear and they are going to be replaced and we're going to reset the board on all the players and get their action pawns back. The game is only played over five rounds so this does go very quickly. I'm probably gonna do more talking than actually gameplay but the whole idea is for you to see how good this game is so I'm probably gonna do a lot of extra talking here. So having said all that and explain the flow of the game and explain to you how precious some of these locations are, that helps you understand why the purple player, as their very first action, is they are going to get money. They're gonna take this location right here, and this location allows them to get two money right at the start of the game. Adding to their one money, that's gonna be three total money. Now money allows them to get upgrades, money allows them to lock in extra victory points at the end of the game. And not only that, any unspent dollar is also going to be worth victory points. So money is never a waste in this game, so it's a good action to take if you need the money, and we definitely need the money at the start of the game. So now we get to move over to the white player who has a whole bunch of options that they can do on their turn. So we see that we have an eight value card, we have a seven value card, and we have a card called Dissertation. Now the nice thing about the Dissertation card is it allows us to take one of these actions for only one silver dollar in the game. So the nice thing about that is normally that space costs two for the first person, 
three for the second person, and it means that we only need to spend one dollar. So that's a really good card, but we're not going to play it just yet because we don't want to lock ourselves into a victory point goal unless we can guarantee that we can gain those victory points because this is basically bonus victory points by locking in these types of research goals and those research goals need to match the cards that we are scoring otherwise they're basically wasted actions and of course it means wasted victory points because we're wasting the money to go after them so what we are going to do for the white player is we're going to increase our potential actions and the potential for plants that we can go out there and get. So we're going to take our worker pawn right here and we're going to take this action right here and we're going to take two cards from the nursery right here right now. And we're going to try to look for cards that either work really well together, meaning it's multiple of the same kind of upgrade for the gene types, which means we can get as many matching sets as we can, because like I said, that's gonna be extra victory points for the set research goals. So it's kind of the thought process we wanna use right now when we're picking our gardening plots. And I'm thinking we're gonna take these two cards right here because these two cards actually work really well together. We see that we have the double F that matches on both these cards and the double T that matches on both these cards. So we see that's potential extra ways for us to get victory points because if we lock in those matching research goals, those can be extra victory points because the Double T right here is two points for every double T we have at the end of the game. The double F is also worth two extra victory points for every double F. So for example, if we manage to fulfill both these cards, that's gonna be potential for eight extra victory points at the game. And understand this is a game where getting about 50 victory points is actually a pretty decent score. So that can actually really add up quickly. And now we get to go over to the blue player needs to figure out exactly what they want to do on their turn. So I am thinking that since we actually have a card that's a little bit more difficult to produce all four of the things we need to actually get that card scored, is we wanna to try to make sure that we get first selection from the dice right here on the board. Because basically the way it works when we get to this phase is whoever takes the first shift gets first choice of the dice here. And sometimes the dice are not always gonna roll in your favor and you may not have enough dice of that type. So it behooves you to try to be first on this line right here because then you get the first choice of the dice. So basically you kind of have to hedge your bets in this game, whether you try to make sure you get first choice or you have the ways to mutate the dice to make sure you're filling the things that you need to complete these, every one of these cards. So following that thought process, we know that big R and little r right here, or the double R gene type here, is fairly common because you can get it on a two or a three. We see that the double F is also fairly easy. You can get it on a two and a three. The double G is fairly easy. But the two lowercase t's is a little bit challenging unless we modify the gene type because to get that, it's only gonna appear on a four, which means we only have a one and six of that appearing. Of course, we can also just mutate dice and things we can do to modify that, but just as things look right now, we're gonna have to fight for that die. Even if we only get one out of the five to pop up, we need to fight for it. So to make sure that we have first options, we're gonna take the spot, which means we're gonna get first choice when we get to this phase. And the nice bonus is this does come with money, and the money is always a good thing in this game. Now I do apologize, I just realized I made one mistake because I was trying to go over the entire game board here. And in doing so, I completely missed the fact that purple actually started with the watering funnel. Now the interesting thing about the watering funnel, and there's an exclamation mark here so you never forget this, but as soon as you draw that card, you must immediately spend it and discard it. You must immediately play it. You don't actually have a choice. So since we forgot to do that, let's pretend I did that for the very first round before we did anything. And we are gonna go ahead and cover up the gene type right there. And that card will be discarded because that is one of those cards that you have to use immediately. But let's go back to purple's actually turn here. Purple, I think for their action is they are going to head to university, which is gonna allow them to automatically for the cost of one money, to go ahead and automatically fulfill one requirement for a card plant immediately, which means we have excessively completed this plant. Now, the only way we can actually score this plant is by taking the gardening action. Cards do not score immediately. It actually requires an action to do so. So that has to be part of your planning. So our action is complete this. So the next round, the last thing we're gonna do with our action is we're gonna garden that. And by guarding that, we're gonna open up more of our plots for additional victory points. So that's already a really good start for the purple player. Now let's head over to the white player right here. The white player for their action is they are gonna go ahead and head over to the tool shed. And by doing so, they are gonna purchase a tool. Well, not purchase, but they're gonna get a tool for free. They're gonna get the flower pot. Now the nice thing about the flower pot is the flower pot immediately comes with a plant. So now we effectively have one more plant. 
And by effectively having one more plant, that means that we have more options when the dice are gonna come out because we have more potential to fill the requirements for that card. That's it for the white player. Let's go ahead over to the blue player. Now the blue player wants some more options. So we are gonna discard the seed bag right here. And we discard the seed bag, you get to draw five cards and you're gonna pick two of the cards to keep and then the other three cards you are going to discard. And I'm gonna go for a nice bit of strategy. And again, I wanna find cards that are going to go ahead and work very, very well together here. So look at the cards we have, just so you can see the cards we have available for us. You see that we have these five cards. And again, we wanna get cards that synergize as well as we can to get those extra bonus points. And I'm telling you, the extra victory points here, they definitely can add up very, very quickly if you play smart. So looking at this, we see that we have these two cards match at least one spot, actually in two spots. So these two cards actually would go decently together and they're not that hard to produce. We see that this card does not match much of anything at all. So we'll take that one out. This card would match right here, but doesn't match anywhere else. So I'm thinking we are just going to keep these two cards and see that they match right here. And the nice bonus about this is these two cards also match these two cards. So if we get the RR, which would be right here, that's two points for every one of those cards if we manage to complete all four of them. That would be eight extra victory points within the game. So that's something we wanna factor into our strategy. So let's go ahead and discard all three of those cards. And then we will keep all three of these cards in our hand. And this is our current hand of cards. Again, don't forget cards are not kept face up. I'm doing this simply for the viewers so you can see exactly the strategies that are going on here. So the blue player for their actual action, they are going to take their action pawn right here and they are going to lock in right here. Remember, we are trying to fill up this card right here. Once we do so, we can harvest it. And don't forget, we are gonna take some money for doing that action. Now back over to the purple player, we have a pretty darn easy, at least I think an easy decision because this is what we are working towards. We are going to take the garden action. Now to take the garden action, the very first thing you are gonna do is you're gonna claim either a nursery card or a tool shed card. Now you pick either one of the face up cards or you can take one of the face down cards. Now I'm thinking the tools out there actually look really, really good, especially the grant card. That allows us to get any upgrade from minus two to the cost. So that almost seems like it's a no brainer, but the interesting thing about this game is there are no no-brainer decisions in this game because there are actually quite a few options. And what I mean by that is if I take a plant card, the next part of this is I'm going to harvest this card right here, which is going to open up both of my garden plots. Now, if I only have one card to play, that's all I can play. If I have two cards to place down in my garden, then I have more options. Again, you always want to keep your options open in this game. So I'm going to play smart and I'm going to keep my options open right here. Now look at the cards that are out there and none of those cards is really speaking to me right now. I mean, seven to six is decent. I got two sevens. Let's see if we can get a better card here. So let's go ahead and draw our card from the nursery and we will get what I would like to refer to as not much better than what I had before and not much better than my other choices. But the nice thing about these kind of cards is they're not that hard to complete, which means if we complete a whole bunch of low pri or low cards that don't take a lot of dice to complete, we can start working on set research goals and make these cards actually multiply in their victory point value. That's a good strategy that we can do. So we picked our card that we we're gonna take. So let's go ahead and harvest this card right here, return these pea pods there, and then this card we will score. And again, scored cards, we play face down. We can always look at our cards at any time, but the other players cannot look at our cards. And the reason why we may want to look at our cards occasionally is we may want to try to remind ourselves exactly what gene types we've already produced so we can start getting some research goals that we want to work on that match the cards we've already scored. So the final part of the guarding phase is we get to fill up both of our guarding parts if we have the cards to do so. And yes, we definitely do so. So we are definitely going to do that. That is it for the purple player. Now we get to go over to the white player. Now the white player can also take the gardening action. Even though we have not completed a plant, it would allow us to fill up our second plot, which is not a bad deal, but we really don't need to worry about it because we actually have two plants out right now. So we're not worried about having limited options. Two cards is a nice basic level to always have out there to give you more options when it comes to the dice. So I'm feeling a-okay with that. So I'm not gonna take the gardening option. I'm gonna do something that's gonna help me get some either some victory points, some victory points, or, oh yeah, victory points. So looking at the board over here, we see that we could actually go first over here on these both these locations. We do see that double F is fairly rare to get, which means that could be a good possibility for us a lot getting the first choice there. So generally that might be a good idea to do so. We see that double G, one large, one small, is not that hard to get. Basically you have a two and a three unless we start modifying the gene types right here. 
on the Punnett squares. So if we start modifying the gene types on the Punnett squares, that may change, but right now we see that's not that hard to get. And it's the same thing down here. We basically have a two and a three right there. I'm sorry, right here we have a two and three, even though we don't get first choice right here. But we do see that this up here might be a little more challenging. It's basically only a one, but that spot's already been taken from us. So I'm thinking we probably want to look towards this double G right here, which means it's a little more challenging. We want to make sure that we have a better chance of getting that. So we will claim this coin right here. And remember, coins are upgrades and coins are victory points. Let's go ahead and move over to the blue player. I think the blue player is actually going to take the gardening action. Now, it may not be the best option in some circumstances, but I think in this case, actually taking the gardening action is a good choice. We've already guaranteed that we are going to be first on two locations right there, which already looks good at us. But taking the guarding action, remember, you can take a tool. So it's basically is like a double action right here. So since the tools locations already been blocked by the white player, by us taking the guarding action, we're opening more options for us. So let's go ahead and take the guarding action for us really quick. So we're gonna go ahead and take that guarding action by moving our action token right there. And we'll look down on the board right here and we are gonna take one of these tools. Well, the grant is very, very nice. It's gonna allow us to get any of these upgrades cheaper by taking two off the cost, which may not be that big of a, or may not be that bad of a decision right now, but I don't think it's actually our best decision right now because remember, we get to pick first when it comes to buying all the upgrades because it's in reverse player order. Purple's first, we're last. That means when it comes to getting the upgrades, we get first choice, so we get the best price. Since we currently have three money, we can afford every single upgrade. So losing two from the cost could be good, but I don't think it's as good as the Grafty Knife because the Grafty Knife is gonna allow us to take more dice during the dice selection phase. And remember, we're already guaranteeing that we're getting to go earlier on the, gra on the dice selection phase. So I think taking the Grafty Knife is actually the better choice. So we'll take the Grafty Knife as our tool. Now, normally at this point, if we had any plants that we could harvest, we would do so. We don't have any, so let's go ahead and plant another plant. I'm gonna pick a plant that is different from the plant I currently have, giving us more options when it comes to the dice because that's what we really, really want. Eyeballing it, I'm thinking that this plant is very, very similar to this plant. So maybe not our best choice right there. This plant right here is semi-similar but does have one difference. This one also has one difference, but this one actually has four total option slots. Remember we have that graffiti knife and it's also worth 10 victory points. So I'm waffling between going between the nine and the 10, but again, just to make this as quick as possible so we're not gonna be here all day, let's go ahead and go for this 10 victory point card right there. So now we get to go to the plant breeding step, and the very first thing for the plant breeding step is we need to find out exactly what kind of plant types we are going to have for our turn. So we'll roll the dice, and when we roll the dice, if we get any of the de novo mutations, we need to re-roll these one time. They come up as de novo mutations again, they're gonna stay that way, but if they roll anything else, that's what they're going to become. So we'll roll again, and unfortunately we lost all the mutation dice, which is unfortunate because they're actually very, very nice. They give you lots of options, and options are always good. So we're gonna look at the one die, and we're gonna see that is the double R. We will put that right there. We look at the twos, and we're gonna see that the two is this right there. And then finally, we're gonna see that the three is going to be right here. So two and three goes right there because we haven't modified any of the genetic code for any of these on the Punnett squares. So let's go ahead and go over to red. Okay, two mutations and no mutations. So we get four ones. So that's actually pretty darn easy. That goes right there. That was a one, let's not cheat. And then we have a three, which we see is this spot right there. So that goes right there. Let's go up to the green dice. I would love to see one of these mutation dice stick. Huh, asking you will receive two mutation dice, just so you can see exactly what the mutation dice mean. So there's the three, which we know is right there. That'll go right there. We got the four, which we see is going to go down below, which means that we are actually getting some good variety here, which gives us lots and lots of options. Purple is really, really happy right now. So finally for the yellow player, two mutations, reroll, one mutation. We will keep that. We have the one, we see that is here. We have the two, which we see is right there. We have the three, which we see is going to be right there. And then finally we have the four, which we know goes right down there. 
Now we start claiming every one of these dice and we start taking the actions that they will give us that allows us to start fulfilling the needs for every one of our plants. Now the interesting thing about this game is this is not done in generic player order like a lot of worker placement games are. This is actually done by who claimed the first slot, by who claimed the second slot, and then finally we go in player order after that occurs. So we're going to go ahead and start resolve this from top to bottom just to make this as easy as possible. We'll start with the blue player right here and we see which kind of resources they need and which kind of resources are less common. We see right now that they have no need for the double R so it's pretty much an easy decision for them. We will take their action and we will take the dice right here and then we will decide which one of these plants we are going to complete. Let's just pick this plant right there. Then we'll move down right here. Nobody's here. The white player is right here. Now white has a couple different options that they can do right here. The first option they can do is they can take one of the mutation dice and just get one money for doing so. The next thing they can do is they can take a mutation die and any other die of the same color to make it be any one of the gene types that they need to fulfill one of the needs down here for the GG. Unfortunately, we don't need to worry about that because we see there's already a dice that does that. So we could just ignore that, but we actually have the option of doing denial of the other players because if there's a player who also needs that, we could as a block maneuver, take that away from them, take away the resources they need. So that is actually something we can do. So we have a couple options we can do here. I am thinking that we are going to try to play a little bit of a denial tactic game here because denying other players resources can always be a very good decision. So we're going to claim this die right here and we will place this over here on offspring research. And since that is this gene type right here, we will simply place this right down there. Next up, we move down to Blue, who is currently looking at any one of these gene types right here for the plant height. Again, our options are here is to take money, or to mutate, or just to take one of the dice over here. So I am thinking that I see one of the dice right here that is pretty darn hard to get, which is this die right here. So we are going to claim this die for the Blue player. We'll take this die, place it over here on our board, and that's going to satisfy this need right here. We are almost, we're pretty much halfway to scoring 10 victory points for the blue player and that finishes that action for us. Now we're gonna see if any players are currently having any of their action tokens in the second shift. And since none of our players do that, we're immediately gonna move past the second shift and now we're gonna start resolving dice in player order. So since player order is gonna start with the purple player, that means they need to pick any die on the board to go ahead and satisfy one of the gene types that that die produces. So looking at purple, we see that we need double F, double G, both lowercase. We have the double G, so that is not bad at all. We need a double R, and we need a upper and a lowercase F right here. So we see that this die, this die, and these two dice are the dice we really, really need right now. We also need this, but that doesn't exist. So looking at the other players, we want to see if there's anything else out there that the other players also need because they're going to be able to pick next. So the goal here is to pick dice that we need that other players need before them, or if they don't need any dice at all, it's not gonna matter what order we pick in. So we look right here, we need this doesn't exist. We see this exists, does anybody else need that die? We look out there and see that nobody else needs it except for the white player. Luckily there's two of them, so we don't need to worry about them taking that from us. We see this right here, does anybody else need that one right there? Nobody needs it, oh, no white also needs it. So this is actually the most highly contested resource we need right now, because if we don't take it, we know the white player is going to take it, so let's play smart and let's go ahead and take it. We will take it right there. That'll satisfy this double R requirement right there. And now let's move over to the white player who still has two dice that they can select. So we could go for money or we can go for finishing out this garden plot. Now we do have two garden plots we can work towards, but we can't actually finish one of them. So I'm actually thinking that Actually, no, wait. Let's look at all of our options here before we start jumping into things too darn quickly because I forgot I have my plant over here. So I'm thinking that since the yellow gene type for the pod color over here is kind of challenging to get, it's pretty rare on the dice unless we stop modifying the gene types, I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and claim that. So let's go here. We're going to take this die right here. We will place it over here on our board and then we will cover this gene type right here. I think that's actually the better decision for us. Of course, money's always nice, but I'm thinking this is going to be a much, much better option for us. 
So let's go over to Blue, who can only get one more die because we see they only have one offspring research slot left. But we also have the grafting knife that we could use, which is a good decision for us, possibly, if we can satisfy two things. Do we want to do that as the option, or do we want to save it for a later turn? I am actually thinking that we could actually get some decent money here. And if we have decent money, we can buy more upgrades in the first round. Remember, assistants are upgrades, new plots are upgrades, dice slots are upgrades, action markers are upgrades. All these upgrades cost money. This die potentially, or this card right here, could potentially be one more money for me right here and right now, which I think is actually... I'm thinking that's a better thing to do. So let's go ahead and claim these two dice right here. We'll do this. And we'll do that, and we are simply taking these two mutations purely for the money aspect only. So let's go over here. Let's discard this card. Let's just know that we have used this card. Leave that die right over there, signifying that die has been used up. And now we are back over here to purple, who has two openings left. And let's figure out what we can get right here. I'm thinking we are going to complete a plant. So looking right over here, we see that we have the number three, which is going to be, oops, let's not cheat here. We have the upper and the lowercase f on the gene type. Let's go ahead and claim that over here on our board. That's going to allow us to finish up this garden plant right there. And again, that means we can do some gardening. It's always a good thing. That's more victory points for us. So now let's go over to white and figure out exactly what they want to claim. We look over here on the board and we see that on the board we could claim money. Not too bad of an idea. But is there any way we can do something that may be much more efficient for us? I'm thinking this early in the game, since we actually have room for two plants, and we can start putting out more plants later, it might be a good idea to get money, because if we get money, we can probably buy one more new plot, which means we can put out a card into our garden, and that means there's more cards that we work on. So I'm thinking that's probably going to be a good idea for us. So let's go ahead and claim this die right here. When we claim the die, we are going to claim $1 simply. That puts us at $3. So blue cannot take any more dice because their offering offspring research section is full. So let's go back over to the purple player who can claim one more die. There's no more money left on the board for us to claim, which would have been very, very nice because we only have $2. And remember, we're going to pick the upgrades last. So... I think what we're going to do is we're just simply going to claim this die right here because like I said earlier, this is a hard gene type to get. So let's go ahead and claim that gene type. We'll add that gene type to our board right here and then we will fulfill this requirement right there. I don't think it's actually a bad decision for us. And now it's time for the research upgrade phase. So remember, this is going to be done in reverse player order. That means that blue gets the very, very first choice. And while there are a lot of good options, I am already looking over at the assistants and seeing that the assistants are probably some of our best options. This assistant right here allows us to turn one die into any other face that we need it to be. That can be fantastic. That means that we can pretty much guarantee at least once per round, we can fulfill one of our garden plot requirements for one of our plants. It's guaranteed for us. That's a good thing. Next thing over here is that we see is that we can just get one free fulfilled requirement for one of the traits for one of our plants. We can automatically fulfill a trait. That's a good thing too. The only downside to that though is that we need to spend the money every time we want to use that action to validate that trait. So while that could be a good card, that's also a card that's going to start taking away our resources very, very quickly. The nice thing is it doesn't take up a dice slot. The bad thing is it takes up a potential victory point. But what I am actually looking at is this card right over here, which is going to be a interesting card for us to use. I think I'm going to use this card just to show you the possible interactions of this game. And I think we're going to show you how sometimes playing the odds can be a good strategy and sometimes just going for good old fashioned straight strategic tactics when you're going to play a game. That way you can see a lot of the variety of the strategy of the game. So I think what we are going to do is we are going to purchase Father Omari because we will be able to use one action to potentially every single round possibly satisfy up to four trait requirements for a plant if the dice are in our favor. If the dice are in our favor. Could be a little bit fun. I think that is what we're going to do. So since we purchased a research assistant, we can look over here the price for research assistants. Hiring an assistant currently only costs $2, so we will spend the $2 to hire the assistant. 
but now for all the other players the cost has gone up by one so the next player in line will need to spend three if they want to purchase a research assistant and notice that we're not refreshing the available cards either so that is also part of the thing that's going on right now so now we get to go over to white and decide if they want to purchase an assistant also or do any one of the other upgrades i am thinking the upgrade we want to do is we want to get a new plot we have a lot of cards available to start planting so the more faster we get these cards planted the faster we can possibly verify the traits the faster we can verify these traits the faster we can score those victory points so let's go ahead and take this action right here which is the new plot action it's going to cost us two dollars we will simply move this up one to signify that action is now going to cost three for any future players and we'll place this right down right here now the flower pot is a one-time use tool this is actually a permanent upgrade to our player board for the rest of the game. And we got this in round one, which means it has a possibility of helping us for multiple rounds. So now we get to go over to the purple player who only has $2. So if they want to buy an upgrade, there's pretty much only one upgrade they can afford. And it's actually a decent upgrade. I think we're going to do it. Extra dice slots could be very, very nice for us. Well, it does mean that next turn we're going to do a lot of gardening because we need to get a lot of cards in our hand very, very quickly. So let's go and spend the $2. We will purchase another dice slot. Now this is a permanent dice slot. There are temporary dice slots and we even have them on our player board. But this specific dice slot right here is a permanent one that's permanently added to our board. So at the end of the very first research upgrades phase, we see that purple has purchased an extra dice slot. We see that the white player has purchased an extra plot. And we see that the blue player has purchased their very first research assistant. So now we are done with this, we now get to move on to the end of round reset so the first thing we need to do for the end of round reset is we're going to reset all the cards that have been out on the board which means any cards that are not purchased are going to disappear the good thing about this is this keeps things constantly cycling i am not a huge fan of games where the cards do not cycle because it can create circumstances where everybody looks at all the cards and say yeah none of the cards are that great i don't really want any of these cards so i actually enjoy games that do this because it does two things it creates a need for the cards because you realize that that card right there is going to disappear if you don't buy it. But on top of that, it also forces things to cycle, meaning that you have to constantly keep modifying your strategies every round. And that is something I actually like in a worker placement game. I don't like it being stagnant because then it feels like you're doing the same actions over and over and over again because they're the obvious actions. I like variety in my worker placement games. So we're gonna move the round tracker over to signify that we're about to start round two. All the research costs are going to go down back down exactly one level. Now they can never go below the cost of one. They can never go up past the cost of four or in the case of the action marker, they can never go past the cost of five. The first player marker, Spade, is gonna pass over to the next player. Definitely not a spatula. That was kind of funny that I said that. I'm gonna remember that for quite a while. And then we're simply going to refresh all the dice that all the players have managed to take to get all their confirmed traits for all of their different plants that they are planting. And after we've done this, we can pretty much move on to the next round of the game after we fill up one more slot, which is going to be the coin slots right here. Any coins that are currently empty will be refilled. We're not going to add on any to any slots that still have a coin left over. That's pretty much the setup for the entire first round. Now we get to move on to the second round, starting with the white player right here, who gets to take the very first action for the round. I think the white player for their turn, they are simply going to claim some money. And I actually have a really good idea of exactly what they're going to do for their entire turn. That makes their turn go by extremely fast. And once their turn is done, let's go ahead and go over to the blue player, who actually has quite a few options. I actually have a little bit of money left over. And they don't, well, they do actually have one trait that is a little bit challenging to get. So I am thinking, since we do have one challenging trait to get, we may want to make sure that we have first dibs on that. So let's go ahead and claim that first. Because like I said earlier, this is a difficult trait to claim and money's always a good thing. And so for the blue player, let's go over to the purple player right here. And purple for their action, they are going to go ahead and head over to the nursery. So they will take this action right here and we are going to claim some more cards from the nursery. We're gonna to try to claim some cards that have some easier traits to verify. Again, these lowercase, double lower cases are a little bit more challenging. They're very rare on the dice unless we start man modifying the punnet squares and I don't think we wanna start using the actions yet because we haven't purchased extra action selection tools and we don't have a lot of actions to do that. But it could be a good strategy if we want to start doing a denial game against the other players who may start going down certain paths. Again, those are all part of the strategies of the game. So having said that, we are going to go ahead and claim some plants here. 
and I'm thinking this one has a trait that's difficult. This one has a two difficult traits. This one has one difficult trait, and this one right here has one difficult trait. So difficult, 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 or difficult. I think we're gonna pick difficult. But let's go with the one that only has one difficult trait. And it's not a difficult trait that we still need to get. So I'm thinking we are going to take this one right here, and let's take this one right here. Those are both of the cards that we are going to be claiming with the nurse reaction. Now let's go back over to the white player. So white player for their action, they are simply going to, I think I am going to, I have a pretty good idea of exactly what we want to do here. So for the white player's turn, like I've said, there's ways to do denial tactics on this game, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do those denial tactics. So for the white player, we are going to take the gardening action. And by taking the garden action, we are basically doing this, even though we know we can't any have any of our garden plots that we're going to be able to take and harvest the plants. But what we can do is we can start claiming cards. So let's go ahead and claim the hand lens right here. And we have a very good idea what we want to do. But the other thing we get to do right now is we get to plant some plants. And I'm going to take this plant right here. And then we will take this plant right here. And while this plant is a little bit tricky for what we are about to do, whoops, wrong one. It's a little bit tricky for what we want to do. I think it's going to pay off for us in the end. At least I'm hoping so that this is going to pay off for us in, our, in the end. But let's go ahead and move over to the blue player. The blue player for the turn is they are going to go ahead and use Father Omari. And in this way, you can actually see the way that the Father Omari card actually works. It's actually pretty darn interesting. It's a little bit of a gamble, but it's actually a very, very fun card to use. And I'm not going to lie, it actually won me the last game I played. So we will take this action right here, and basically what this means is we're going to roll one of every one of these gene-type dice. If any of them come up with an X, we're going to re-roll them. So let's go ahead and roll those gene dice. Now remember, with these gene dice, if any of these gene-type dice comes up as mutations, we're going to just re-roll them until they're anything but a mutation. So we're going to roll these dice, and we will get... Well, we got one mutation, so we are going to re-roll it. And we got a non-mutation. So let's go ahead and start these from top to bottom and see exactly where these would work for every one of us. So you can see exactly how this would work. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to see that a number one is going to be a double R. So we will claim this right here and see if we can use a double R. We can't use a double R. So let's go ahead and take that off the board. We see that this right here is going to be an upper and a lowercase f. Can we use that? Why? Yes, we can actually use that. So we are going to verify the trait on this plant right here. So now we're going to come over here to the green and we're going to see that the three is an upper and a lowercase g right here. Can we use that? Why, yes, we can. And not only can we use that, we can actually use that to complete one whole plant. All we got to do is just do some gardening and then we will get the victory points for that plant. So it actually worked out very, very well for us. Back over to the final one, we're going to see that this is an upper and a lowercase t. Looking over at our plants, we see that we can also use this one to verify a trait. So guess what? We just verified another trait. This actually worked out extremely fantastically for us. So sometimes playing the odds and playing the fates can really be in your favor. But again, sometimes they can't. So it's a little bit of a gamble. But again, sometimes the gambles can pay off and sometimes they'd be a heck of a lot of fun. Back to the purple player. They need money and we're kind of future planning exactly what we are going to be doing on our turn. We know that if we can get at least one dollar and nobody sees what we're doing, we can actually do some nice good moves with our two final actions for the turn. All we need to do is just make sure this pans out, but let's do some future planning and figure out exactly how we can do this and make sure that things go in our favor. I am thinking that we are gonna take this action token right there and we are going to move it over here to green to make sure we get first choice on green. And you'll get to see exactly why we're doing that in just a moment. The white player is gonna take advantage of their hand lens card because this is going to allow them to get a little bit of money and also change the gene types and the Punnett squares to make sure that they can actually fulfill this requirement right here. So to do so, we will spend our action token because we actually have to take the action right here. The moment we do that, we will discard the hand lens. So the hand lens will be discarded and we will claim $2, putting us up to $5. Remember, money is very good for us because we're going to be selecting last when it comes to getting the upgrades for our research upgrades. So now that we've done that, we need to take one of these gene types and modify it to the way that's going to help us the best. I am thinking we are going to simply take this right here, which guarantees any one or three is going to allow us to fulfill this requirement right there 
on our player board. We see that we have this double R right there. So if we take this and change this, we now have changed the chances that a double R is gonna pop up by modifying the gene types. So again, we're future planning and trying to make our future rounds happen so we get the most dice to help us fulfill these garden plots. The blue player for the turn, they are going to garden because gardening is gonna give them some victory points. So let's go ahead and garden. We will take this and we will remove all four of these tokens right here. And this card we will now score will be worth 10 victory points for us out of the end of the game. But before we do that, we should actually claim a plant from the nursery, either from the face up or from the face down, we're gonna grab a tool. I knew I was gonna grab a tool because I knew that's what I wanted because the break is very, very nice. It's gonna allow us to cover any options where we may need to mutate anything, which is always very, very nice. Fortunately, it's only a one-time use, but hey, that's a one-time use for something that is extremely nice. So now that we have done that, claimed that, and reaped or managed to pull up our plants, right, or harvest our plants, now we get to play another card down, and I'm going to play that indoor garden plot. So the purple player kind of has two options of what they can do. One's not that great of an option, and one is the better option in this case. Only reason why I mention is this, just so you can see the different options to see how the gameplay works. But if you look over here, we could spend $1 right here to automatically go ahead and verify this trait right here on our plant, which means that these both these traits on both these cards can actually be harvested next round because we don't have any more action tokens. The negative to that is that that means that all the dice that are gonna be rolled this turn we won't be able to claim any of them unless a whole bunch of them comes up with mutations. And remember, there's only a one in six chance on each one of those mutations. So that's not really in our favor. So that's not a really good decision. So I'm thinking our best decision is going to go and take the garden action. Now, before we take the garden action, we need to figure out if we want to take a something from the nursery or if we want to take a tool from the tool shed. I am thinking that a tool from the tool shed will be our best option right here because we have a lot of traits on our upcoming plants right here that are a little bit more challenging to fulfill. So I am thinking that we will take the rate card right here, which allows us to do one mutate when we pick up a die. We will claim that. We will add that into our garden hand of cards right here. And then we will go ahead and harvest this plant right here. So there's six more victory points for us total. And then we will play this card out right there. So now that we've taken our last action, and that was the gardening action for the purple player, that is the it for the all the players. And that ends the working phase. Now the working phase is over, we get to move on to the next phase where we get to start doing some plant breeding and start rolling some of the dice. So let's go ahead and roll the dice here really, really quick. And we will start here with the blue dice. That was a lot of mutations. Reroll the mutations. Are we gonna get more? Whoa, we got a lot of mutations. Maybe somebody can claim a lot of money. So we're gonna look at the one right here. Remember, we changed the gene type on the Punnett square, so that means that this is going to be the double R, and this right here is also going to be the double R. If we look right here, since we changed the gene type, that means a one will be a double R, and that means a three will be a double R, so that works out pretty darn nice right there. Next up, we're gonna roll the gene dice for the flower color. Okay, so we will go ahead and place these dice here really, really quick on the board. We will see that the one is going to go right there. The two will go right there. This two will also go there. And then finally, the four will go all the way over here. Next up, we're gonna roll the green gene dice. And we'll start with the ones, which will be right there. The four, we know will go right there since we modify the gene, and we know the two and the three will go right there. And then finally, we'll roll the gene dice for the plant height. We'll re-roll the mutations. Threes and twos, and then the fours will go right there. So now we're gonna claim these, but again, we don't do this in player order. We're gonna do this by seeing if anybody is working the first shift. And since we see that somebody is working the first shift, they are going to get the very, very first choice over here. And the first person over here is going to be the blue player. 
who gets to decide exactly what trait they want to claim. Well, they actually need this. We see that we need this. We need that right here, but this is also worth money, which is something we need to consider. Plus, we also have the rake, which allows us to mutate any one die. So do we go for the money, or do we go for the guaranteed thing? I am thinking that we're going to go for the guaranteed thing, and let's go ahead and play it safe, because we've already been a little bit reckless by relying on Father Omari. So that right there is going to fulfill the double F over here on this garden plant. Now we get to go over to the purple player because of this right here. And we need to figure out exactly what purple needs. They need the double lowercase f. We are over here first though. So we need this right here. We don't need that. We basically need this. Okay. We will take that right there. And that will fulfill this need right here. And now that we finished all the first shifts for all of our players and nobody's working on the second shift, that means now we're going to resolve the rest of it in player order, starting with the white player who gets to pick the very first dice that they want. So money is always a great option. We see that we have lots of money right here, and money will allow us to buy the upgrades, which can come in extremely handy. So that's something we want to think about. But if we keep going for money, we're not going to start getting rid of these garden plants. Remember, the garden plants is the way we're going to get the victory points. So we are going to go ahead and look at this double G right here, which is something we definitely need. So we are going to claim that right now really quick. Place that on our player board, and that will resolve or solve for that trait right there. Remember, we do have four plants out, so that's a lot of stuff that we need to be looking at. So we need to make sure we're watching exactly what we have here. We're going to go over to the blue player who wants to figure out how they can get... Well, actually, this is a pretty easy one for them. They know they need the, this die right here, and they want to claim this before anybody else takes it, especially the white player who definitely needs that. So let's go ahead and claim that really, really quick. We will place that on our player board right there. That claims that. Now let's go ahead and move over to the purple player. And purple needs double lowercase f. Well, if we look over here at the board, we see that is definitely available. So we are going to claim that. Let's pick that up. Place it over here on our offspring research. And guess what? We have just finished one more plant. Again, we are already starting to work on the victory points quite a bit for the purple player. Taking a nice, steady, easy, strategic goal towards getting those victory points. But is it going to pan out for them in the end? That's what the big question is going to be. Let's go back to white. Who is going to? Let's go ahead and take care of solving for one more plant trait. We will come over here and claim this for the double T. We will see on our board that that will go ahead and verify the trait on another plant. So that means that is scored victory points for us. Back over to blue. Blue sees that if they claim this right here, they are also going to gain nine victory points. So we will gladly claim that. We will place that over here and that will take care of that plant right there. Fortunately, we can't take any more plants because we don't have any room for dice, but that does leave purple who is next to do so. And I'm thinking money is actually looking really, really good for purple right now. They have two slots left. They can not fulfill the other plant. So I'm thinking taking money may be the better option for them. So let's just go ahead and claim this right here, which is going to be worth one money for us. I think that's going to be a good decision for us. We're already ahead in the victory points. We don't need to push things too fast, too far for us because just don't think we need to do it. Let's start making sure we have a good solid base of victory points. So back over to yellow right here. They can't take this. They can't take that because it is not available to them. So I am thinking we are also going to go for money right here. I think that's the better decision for us. Oh wait, I forgot we have all these plants over here. I gotta keep forgetting about those. They have too many plants. They have a wonderful large garden. So let's go ahead and take care of this plant right here, which we can definitely do by claiming this right here. We'll claim that, add that to our offspring track, and then we will fulfill for this plant right here. And blue cannot do any more because they do not have any more offspring research locations, but purple definitely does have one more slot available. 
and I'm thinking it's an easy one. We're going for the money because that gives us $3 and that gives us a lot of options when it comes to the point where we're going to start doing the research upgrades, which is the next phase we're about to start. So remember, the research phase is always done in reverse player order, which means that purple gets to go first with their $3 and they can actually afford everything on the board right now, which is actually really, really darn good for them. So we need to figure out exactly what is going to be best for them. Having that dice slot has actually paid off for them very, very well. And I'm thinking that it may be something we want to stick with. That or the other options, we're going to take a new plot, which allows us to lay out another plant. That could also be a very good option. And I'm actually thinking that might be the better decision for us. Having that plot available to us is going to allow us, when we do the gardening step, we're going to have one more space to lay out our plants. And I'm actually liking that idea a lot right now. So we'll take the extra plot. That is going to cost us $2. And now the plot price has gone up. The plot has thickened. Okay, bad pun. Over here to the blue player, we need to figure out what they want to do because they actually have $4, which means they have a decent amount of money available to them. That means they can do every single one of the actions. Also, is having one more garden plot going to help them or is a dice slot going to help them? I am thinking neither is going to help them because if they have one more action token, they can make sure they use Father Omari every single turn. And using Father Omari every single turn sounds like a wonderful, wonderful idea to me. And it's never going to get cheaper than it is right now. So we will claim that and we will take one more action token for us. And now we get to go to White who currently has $5 on them. Which means pretty much everything is available to them. But if they play it smart, they may be able to take two upgrades. Because you're only limited in purchasing the upgrades as long as you want to keep spending the money. Once you pass, you can't get any more upgrades. But you can keep buying upgrades until you take that pass action. I am actually thinking that taking that action marker now before the price really, really starts to skyrocket might be a really good idea for us. So the current price for the action marker is going to be three. That'll go up to four for anybody else, ensuring that nobody else's turn can buy another action marker. We'll take that action marker back right now. Now we'll go back over to the purple player and we'll see, does purple want to buy anything? Well, with their one little dollar, that's going to be a big no. Coming over to blue with their two dollars, do they want to buy anything? I'm going to go ahead and push our luck. We're going to buy another dice slot. We'll take that dice slot quite happily and add that onto our board. That's going to give us a lot more options. Now we come back to white. White actually wanted the additional dice slot. And since blue took it away from him, raising up the price, if we had one more dollar, we could also buy it. Unfortunately, that has been taken away from us. So the only thing left we can do is pass or we can hire an assistant. Now, both of the assistants that are out are actually very, very good and have good uses. But with the current board state, the only one of these assistants who I think is good for white at this point would be the brother right here. Now, brother Franz costs money, which means that we're going to have to keep burning money to use him. But as long as we're willing to burn the money for him and we have the money available, we can have extra dice slots, which can be a good thing. But again, costs money. We're managing to bring in a little bit of money every single turn, but if I'm burning it on that, I can't buy other things. But the nice thing to really think about here is if we look at our section of the player board, we actually already have one extra plot, which is good. We have a flower pot, which is gonna disappear once it's filled up, but at least we know that's an option for us right there. Our really big bottleneck we have right now is the fact that we can't take a lot of dice. So while I would rather have just a basic dice slot the fact that the brother allows us to have two dice slots is actually really good. Costs money, but it's actually really good. So let's go ahead and spend the $2 and we will hire an assistant. Means the higher assistant price has gone up to three and we now have an assistant. So the only person who doesn't have an assistant right now in the game is going to be the purple player. That is it for the research phase for all of our players. So now we just get to go to the cleanup part of the round. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to refill the money on any slot that had money missing from it. And then any cards that were not purchased are going to be cycled out of the game for now. They can come back later and there's probably a good chance they will come back later, especially when it comes to the assistance. But the rest of them, we will go ahead and refill. We got a 12 victory point plant. That's a good one right there. A nine and 11. And another 12. That's looking really, really good. From the tool shed, we'll get the rake, which allows you to mutate a die. We will get the watering funnel, which means the moment somebody buys it, they will immediately complete a trait. Ooh, another watering funnel. Well, well, well. 
gardening looks like a really good option this turn. And then finally, we will get the grafting knife. That's the option for more dice slots for one round. That's a really darn good tool. That is actually really worth it. Now we need to advance the round tra tracker, so blue will be the new first player in the next round. Let's drop down all the prices over here so they all go back down just a little bit. We refill the board, so the only thing left to do is to take back our action, mark our action markers and then take all the options from dice and return them to their slots on the board. Starting round number three now, the blue player gets to be the first player and our very first action we are going to do is we're gonna do the guardian action. Why are we gonna do it? Because these two cards are looking really, really nice right now. They are worth 12 victory points apiece. And if we can get one of those cards into play, that's a great amount of victory points for us. And both these cards look like they could be a little bit challenging to get out there, but they don't look like they're gonna be impossible especially this one right here, thinks of the fact that the Punnett Square has been modifying, meaning that this is a little bit easier to achieve right here, right now, at least at the way the game state is currently sitting. So, we are gonna do the guardian action. So the first thing you do for the guardian action is you take a card from the nursery or the tool shed. We're picking the nursery. We are going to harvest this plant right here. That means we have managed to score nine victory points, plus our other card over here, meaning we are at 19 victory points, plus anything else that we get to the set research goals, something we may want to consider. We will then plant this plant right here in our garden. Of course, I gotta signify that I took the gardening action because that would be the legal move. That is it for the gardening action for that player. Now let's go ahead and move over to the purple player who has a couple options including gardening, but I'm not sure if we want to garden this early because it's our own player board. It's not a space somebody can take from us. That's the key. We don't want a space that somebody can take from us. A space such as a space that allows you to take some extra money. So let's move right there, and that'll give us $2. That puts us at $3. Now let's go over to white. White could actually harvest right now, but again, do we want to do that this early? I am actually thinking, yes, we want to do that this early. So we are going to take the gardening action. So we'll take the gardening action and we will claim this watering funnel right here. Now, the nice thing about the watering funnels is remember, as soon as you take the watering funnel, you must use it immediately. So since we have to use the watering funnel immediately, we'll go ahead and discard the watering funnel right there. And then we are going to fulfill one trait, meaning that we just fulfilled two cards with one action. I think that is the better action for us. So this card will score us some victory points. We will get rid of those traits and we'll place this face down. Unfortunately, we do lose the flower pot because the flower pot is a one-time use tool. And then we will also fulfill the requirements for this plant right here. Seven more victory points for us right there. And then let's go ahead and plant that plant right there. So with that one action right there, we just managed to score 16 victory points. Not too bad at all for the white player. So now let's go over to the blue player whose turn is next. And I think the blue player is gonna do a little bit of gambling again, just because it's kind of fun. So let's take one of every single die really, really quick, and let's roll the dice. Remember, mutations we will re-roll. Speaking of which, let's re-roll those, and now let's go ahead and figure out exactly which one of these dice, if any, will manage to give us some resources really, really quick here. So this, Three right here was a double R. Can we use that? Why, yes we can. So let's take that back and we will claim the double R. That worked out perfectly for us. This one right here will be double lowercase f. Can we use that? <laughs> yes we can. Next up is going to be here, which is a double lowercase g. Can we use that? Nope, can't use it. Gamble didn't pay off that time, but it's done pretty darn well for us so far. And then finally, we're gonna come over here and then this is going to be worth upper and lowercase t. Can't use that one either, but we actually did pretty darn good using Father Amari. That was actually definitely worth it in my opinion. Let's go ahead and move back over to the purple player and figure out what they wanna do for their action. Now looking at the purple player's board, we see that if we do a garden action, we are gonna put a card right here, but we're gonna have an empty extra plot. And remember, we wanna have as many plots filled as we want because it gives us many more options when it comes to the dice traits. Because the more plots we have, the more plants we can have out, the better the chances the dice traits are gonna match exactly what we need to score those victory points. So having said that, let's go ahead and take a action to head over to the nursery, and we get to claim two cards from the nursery. Now don't forget, normally when you garden, you also get a free card, but 
I think you know what card I'm going for when I do that gardening action. So let's go ahead and take this 11 and let's take this 12. A little bit risky, I know, but the nice thing about these cards is they are worth a decent amount of victory points. And looking at the cards that we've already completed, we see that double large R is in there. Double large T. Hmm. If we take the double large R, that's two victory points. We're looking at possibly have eight victory points if we take this research action. If we take that research action right there, two points each, we have four cards that possibly match it. That could be another eight victory points. That's something we may want to take as quickly as possible before the action slot's taken from us. But it is round three. This is only a five round game, so you have a limited amount of action. So let's make sure we're not trying to do too many things. That's a great way to win, lose a worker placement game. Let's head back over to white and figure out exactly what they want to do for their turn here. Lots of options. We actually have quite a few options here because we have two plants, three plants that are very close there. I'm thinking what we want to do is guarantee that we get the traits. First choice on traits and money can never hurt. Let's go over to the blue player. Blue has actually been doing pretty darn good. They would get a little nice little bit of good things going in their favor. We could, could, we could do that. That, no, hmm. Actually, that may be a good decision. I think I'm actually going to do that. Maybe a little bit sneaky, but yeah, I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and take our action token right here. We will claim that dollar. I think I know exactly what we are going to be doing for the blue player. This is going to work out for us pretty darn well, I think. Yeah, it's going to work out very well. So we took our dollar for doing that. Let's go back over to the purple player right over here and see what they want to do for their action. And we know that the action we want to do is we're going to take the gardening action because we've already discussed exactly why we want to do that. So let's go ahead and take the gardening action. First thing you do when you take the gardening action is you're going to claim a nursery card or a tool. I'm taking that tool. The tool we're going to take is we're going to take that watering can. I might as well go ahead and discard it right now because it's going to become one immediate trait for one of our plants. And I'm thinking we're going to do the double F because the double F is still a little bit challenging to do. Then we're going to go ahead and harvest this plant right here. Again, that is more victory points for us. We'll discard that face down right here and then we will plant two more plants. Do we want to go for some really high score victory point cards? There's only effectively two more rounds before the game. We do have the dice slots for it. Heck, let's go for it. Fortune favors the bold. So that is it for the purple player. Let's go back over to the white player and they have two action tokens left. Because they're the last player for this part of the turn. Let's see what we want to do with them. Do we want to work on our dissertation already? We could work on our dissertation because it's only going to cost us one dollar. See, two, four, six, right here if we get these plants done. Two for that. Well, actually, no, yeah. That'd be two. That would be... I think we're going to go ahead and work on our dissertation. I think this is actually a good idea for us because that's going to lock on some victory points. Because remember, it's first come, first serve when it comes to the set research goals. So we definitely want to get that before anybody else can claim that from us. So we will simply discard the dissertation tool. And when we discard the dissertation tool, we are going to pay $1, which we can afford pretty darn easily right now. Well, maybe not easily, but we can definitely afford it. And then we are going to lay claim to the round shape right now, which means that any cards that we complete that have this symbol or this symbol on it for every single symbol that appears, matching that is gonna be two victory points for us at the end of the game. So I think that's actually a good decision for us. And it doesn't even cost us anything but one dollar to do instead of the two normal cost of normal cost. So that's it for our turn. Let's go ahead and head back over to the blue player on their turn. So Blue needs to think about their turn very, very strategically at this point because we know that they are going to be the last person to pick any research upgrades and one dollar is not going to cut it for anything. The best thing you can do is get to two dollars as long as the other two players don't pick anything that they want. They could possibly be left with one card possibly to purchase, which could work in the favor, but to do so, we're going to need another dollar. We have one action token left. But the other thing we could do is we could take a temporary dice slot, which put us up to five dice slots, which means that we have more chances of claiming dice. 
we have five dice that we need to harvest. So do I go for the victory points or do I go for the money knowing that I'm basically going to get whatever's left over, meaning I'm not going to get a lot of good choices. I am thinking that we are going to go for the victory points because I think that's a better decision for us. So there's going to be a temporary dice slot. That means that we can pick up to five dice this turn. And if there's a whole bunch of mutations, hey, that could be $5 for us. That could actually work out our benefit. May not be a bad decision. I actually think it's a decent decision right now. So purple doesn't have any action tokens left. Let's go over to white who has one action token left. We have a lot of plants we need to fulfill. I'm thinking that temporary dice is actually a good idea for them. Oh, no, no, I forgot we have brother Franz. We need money. So let's go for first choice. So let's look for the things that are hard to get. Double F is hard to get. Uh, double G is also hard to get. So let's go ahead and go for the double G because at least with $1, we know that we can lock in those dice. I am A-OK -okay with that. That is all the actions for all of our players. We're done with the action part of the phase. Now it's time to go over to the plant upgrade. I'm sorry, it's now the plant breeding phase of the round. For the plant breeding phase, the first thing we need to do is we need to start rolling these dice. here mutation we rolled okay and then finally for the plant height one mutation who stays a mutation hey I'm okay with that again there's some possibility for some money or some trace to be fulfilled I am a okay with that that may work out perfectly for us so mutation goes right there let's see we have two threes which is going to be here and we have two twos wow that was the only way that this trait could appear was with the two so that actually worked out some good options so now we'll go over to red which is going to be the flower color we have two ones which is here we have a three which is here and then we have a four which is going to be there over here we have one threes and four do this quickly. We have a mutation. We have ones. We have three. And then we have four. That's actually a very good spread. So now remember, we're going to do the first shift first, which means we're going to start with the white player. So if we look over the white player's board. We need to look at exactly what we need. And we know that we need the double lowercase f. So we are going to claim this right here. We're going to take that double lowercase f and we will fulfill that trait right there. Good choice, I think. That worked out perfectly. Let's take that shovel back. Now we get to get first choice over here on this location also, and we need to figure out exactly what we want to take. Looking over at our player board, we see that we need the double lowercase g. I'm actually going to move this up because I keep forgetting about that because that's just not a good position for me. I don't know why I'm having trouble with that, and I don't like that. Let's make it easier on myself and make it easier for all of you watching the video here. So we have a double lowercase g right here. Let's go ahead and claim that. We will claim that just like that. And then the double lowercase g, we have fulfilled this trait. So we're actually working on filling up all these cards. If we can actually do this perfectly, I mean, we don't have enough slots, possibly. But if we do it perfectly, we might be able to fill up a couple different cards this round that could actually work out for us. Let's see if we can make it happen. First, though, we need to go over to Blue, who is still also working the first shift over here. So let's see exactly what Blue still needs. Blue actually has options. Blue does need a trait that is a little bit harder to get, but there's two copies of the dice. And looking out there, nobody else needs that die. So, of course, another player could try to screw you by taking the mutation die and taking that die, because denial is a definite strategy in this game, and I've used it before. And it's one for me, so I mean, it is definitely a good strategy to use in this game. But looking at the other player's resources, what they have, do we know if that's going to happen? Well, we don't. We have to hedge our bets here and hope that's not going to happen. I am thinking money is going to be the better option for us. We have a lot of dice slots. We have the option to do everything. But before we actually to see that, let's see if we could fill up all five of our requirements because we actually do have five dice slots. So let's not jump into those very, very quickly. So... Can we fill the F? 
We can fulfill the F. Can we fill the double G? We can fill the double G. We can fulfill the double T. We can fulfill the R, and we can also fulfill the lowercase g. So we have five dice slots available to us. If we get the dice we need, we can potentially fulfill both of these gardening plots if we don't go for the money. Do we go for victory points or we go for money? That's 22 victory points. I think we go for the victory points. I think that's a better decision. So let's go ahead and get the victory point dice that we know will be taken from us quickly. So we see that this will be our first option right there. That fulfills that trait right here. And I got a little bit excited. We're still working on the yellow trait. So let's not cheat. <laughs> That's what happens when you plan the entire round out. You're like going, I'm ready to do the round just now. And then you cheat. But I fixed it. And at least I caught it before I got anywhere. Because I know I've gotten YouTube comments very, very quick for that one. So our first shift action, whew, that was a close one. So we're looking for that double T. We will take that double T. And then let's fulfill that trait just like that. And that way, look at our player board, we see that we still have four traits left to fulfill and we have four dice that we can take. Now we get to do this in player order. So blue still gets to get the action that they really, really need. So they're not like they're losing anything out. So I wasn't a total dirty cheater here. So let's go ahead and claim this die right here. We will take that die, put it over here. And we have now fulfilled two of the three traits for this card right there. Now we have to do this in player order because nobody is working second shift. So we have a dead blue. Now we get to go over to purple. Purple is looking to fulfill that trait card very, very quickly. If we fulfill this trait right here, we can do some gardening and get some victory points. We will claim this die right here. Pop it over onto our board right there. And we have fulfilled that plant right there. So it actually works out for us. Let's go over to the white player here, who I think, looking at all the dice out there, is it worth them to pay for the brother fonds? We can't fulfill this trait because it doesn't exist on the board. We can't fulfill this trait because it doesn't exist on the board. We can do that one. Cannot, cannot, can. So basically, I'd be paying $1 to only use one of the squares of Brother Fonds. I don't think that's a good idea. That's not a good return on investment here. I don't think that's a good idea at all. So Brother Fonds, you're not gonna get paid this turn. Although, we only have two turns left. Oh my gosh. It's actually a tough choice. It actually really, really comes with a tough choice. I am not going to pay him. I want to keep that dollar. I know I'm going to regret that decision. I know I'm going to regret that decision. But let's go ahead and claim this die right here. Transfer it to our board, and that will resolve that trait right there. We cannot take any more dice unless we pay a dollar. And I just don't think it's worth it to pay a dollar, although that is such a rare trait right now because of the modification of the Punnett square. We'll see when it comes back to my turn if I want to do it. So we go back over to the blue who has three openings left over. We are going to reach down, grab this trait die right here. We will lay claim to that trait die and we have just fulfilled a 12 victory point plant. We are definitely gonna be doing some happy gardening when our turn comes over to gardening. Back over to the purple player. Well, purple looking at the board sees that they need this. They also see that white needs it. And we know that white is deliberating about spending the dollar over here. Let's go ahead and answer that decision because we know that this is a very hard trait to get a hold of right now. And we also know that this trait right here, looking at our player board, is currently impossible to get because the Punnett square has been modified. So let's try to play smart here. We will take this die right here and we will verify that trait. Back over here. White says, yep, I'm done, I'm not paying, I'm done, I'm passing. We go back over to blue, and blue needs the die that was just taken from him. So that's not an option anymore unless we use our rake. Let's go ahead and use our rake. So we'll take our rake and we will mutate this die right here, and we will discard our rake. What should we just put in the discard pile right over here? 
And then we have just fulfilled this trait right here, and we're happy with that. It was worth discarding the tool to make sure that we satisfied a need, a need that is very, well, let's say, just pretty darn rare right now. So let's go back over here to purple. We have two dice slots available. We know that this is a little bit challenging to take, and we need it. We did need that, but it's taken from us. We know that this is challenging to get, but there's more of this than there are of that, so we are going to take this die right here. Put it up here on our board, and we will fulfill this trait right there. White is still out of it. Now we get to go over to the blue, and we know that they just need one thing left, and you know what? They can easily get it because that is going to be this trade die right here. And they just had a really, really great turn. They just fulfilled two plants, which means that we have 22 victory points coming in for us. That's really darn good in this game. Back over to purple. Let's see. Purple has one more die they can take. Plus they have a rake if they need a resource that is not out there. Do we use the rake? Or do we use the force? Use the force. Okay. Well, we actually have some choices here. Purple needs this, which is a hard trait to get. Remember, it's a one in six chance. We also need this trait, which is hard to get. It's also a one in six chance. So basically, we want to take one of these dice, so we're not going to use our rake. I'm going to hedge my bets. We have a 50-50 shot here. Let's go ahead and take this one right here and add that to our board, and we will fulfill this trait need right there. That's actually not too bad. And we can probably take care of this card with one action on the next turn where we get to be the first player. I'm actually A-OK -okay with that. So look at all of our player boards. All of our players have no more room for dice that they can willingly wanting to take. So that's going to be it for the plant breeding phase. Now we get to go over to the research upgrade phase for all of our players. And again, we get to do this in reverse player order. White can't afford anything, so let's go ahead and skip them. We're going to go over to Purple, who currently has $3. Is there anything they want? They want everything. They want everything. They actually are looking at the assistants and they're actually looking at the dice slot. So the interesting thing about this game is dice slots can be good, but they can also be a double-edged sword because sometimes you just don't need them. You need other things. So you need to make some smart buying decisions. So it's not always a good decision just to keep buying dice slots every single turn, especially if you don't have the plots to fulfill. But action tokens are always, always, always a good decision in a game like this, but they may not be the best decision depending on the actions and the way you set up your board. I think though, in this case, we are gonna take another action because I know what we wanna do next round and it's going to take four actions to do so. So I think in this case, it's gonna be our best idea. So we're gonna spend the $3, that's our current cost for an action token, and we will take our fourth action token for that player. And then the cost for the action tokens is now going up to four, meaning nobody can afford it. And on top of that, actually nobody can afford anything else because everybody only has $1 a piece. And every single one of these research upgrades costs two minimum. So that's not going to happen for all of our players. So the only thing left to do is go to move up to the end phase reset. And let's go ahead and take care of that really quickly. So refill the money. And the big disappointment here is there's actually an assistant I really wanted to, but we just couldn't afford the assistant. Like a good worker placement game, you can't do everything even though you want to do everything. There's just never enough actions or resources or supplies or everything to do everything you want to do on every single turn. It's the hallmark of a worker placement game. That's why we love our worker placement games. So we have an eight victory point, ooh, another 12 victory point plant, a 10 victory point plant, and then finally an 11 victory point plant. For our tools, we will get the seed bag. For anybody who needs to just get what they need very quickly, a rake, we get another seed bag. And then finally, we'll get another flower pot. That flower pot is actually looks pretty darn decent. So we're gonna be starting round four. Purple will be the new first player for the following round. Prices are going to drop meaning that everybody should be able to afford a research upgrade next round. That actually looks good for all of our players. So the only thing left to do is put back the dice and take back all our, all our action tokens. So starting round number four, again, I know exactly what I'm doing with the purple player, so this is going to go fairly quick. We are going to go for $2. 
Nice and super easy quick. We're gonna go over to the white player and for the white player, I know exactly what they're going to do also. They're gonna take the guardian action and they are going to pick a 12 point victory card. We are going to harvest this plant right here. We will place that face down and then we will go ahead and plant that plant directly right there, locking in that higher victory point card. And if we can get that, that's a darn good, decent amount of victory points for us. And that might give us an idea of what traits we want to go for also because F, 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 and F. Ooh, that's something to consider also for our victory points right there. The blue player, they are going to take the nursery action, which is going to allow them to claim these two cards right here. Back over to the purple player right over here. They are going to simply take the university action right here. Now the nice thing about the university action, when you take the university action, you can verify a trait as long as you can spend the money and it only costs $1 to do so. We will spend that $1 to verify a trait and we will verify this trait right here, meaning when we take the guardian action with the remaining action tokens we have, we are going to get a really darn decent guardian action. So that's gonna give us some good amount of victory points. Now we get to go over to the white player. Now white has a pretty darn good victory point card, but it's a victory point card that is a couple traits that are a little bit more difficult to get. And actually one of the traits on it is actually impossible to get, so they need to figure out a way to get that trait. That means they need to figure out a way to do mutation. Well, there's two ways to do that. They can rely on the luck of the dice, or we can take a rake. I think we're gonna take that rake. So we are gonna head over to the tool shed and we will grab a rake, which means that we can guarantee that we can finish that item right there. Now our other option that we could have actually done if we wanted to, is we could have changed the trait over here on the Punnett square. And if we change the trait on the Punnett square, there's a good chance that we can modify it in a way to guarantee that we're gonna get this trait to pop up on the dice. Here's the trick if we do that. If we do that, we are actually helping the white or the purple player do it because they also need that trait on that 11 victory point card. So instead of helping them, we're only gonna to try to help ourselves, which I think is a better decision right here. Now we head over to the blue player and the blue player's turn is pretty darn obvious. We are going to take the guardian action. So the first thing we do for the guardian action is do we wanna claim anything over there? I think we do. We actually wanna claim this flower pot. Now if we claim the flower pot all the way over here, that's going to give us a third plant that we can plant and we do need a third plant because we do have a third plant to plant. So we will take that and we will take that and we will spend that card immediately. And the nice thing with the flower pot is it does come with a plant. Now we see that we have an eight victory point plant right over here on the board. And that's a pretty darn decent, but I think we're gonna take a chance on a better card popping up. So let's go ahead and see what card we will get to add to our board. And our flower pot will get an 11 victory point plant for us. I think that was a much, much better deal for us. So now we get to finish the rest of our planting action. We will harvest this plant, 12 victory points. And then we will harvest this plant for 10 more victory points. That is looking really darn nice for the blue player. Now we get to go back over to the purple player over here. The purple player for their turn is also going to take a gardening action. But before we do that, do we want to take a nursery action? It's actually a good question. Because, nope, I think this is actually a better decision. We are gonna take the gardening action. That's gonna allow us to claim one card. We can take the bag of seeds or we can take this card from the nursery. I think we're gonna take that card from the nursery. And then we will score some victory points for this card. We will score some victory points for this card. And that'll make us happy as we plant these two new plants in their spot. And we still actually have one action pawn left for us available. So that's actually really, really good. Over to the white player. White is actually in a very, very unique state for the board right now. We actually have so many possibilities of dice that we can actually take on our turn that there's a good chance that even though we can take five dice, we need a total of nine different dice to fulfill the plants that we have here. So the odds are pretty much in a favor that doesn't matter how the dice come out, we're probably gonna be able to use most of the dice that come out. So that is actually a good thing. So it probably would be a good decision to either figure out ways to get more dice slots, meaning taking some of the temporary dice slots right now, or guaranteeing that we can get the dice that come out that we really, really need. 
Well, we know that one of the dice we really, really need, we're going to guarantee just by taking the rate card here. So we kind of have that covered, so we're not sweating that too much. And we know that if we fulfill these R cards, that's going to be worth some extra victory points for us also. So that's something we also need to think about. So having said that, I think what we're going to do, since there's only two rounds left for the game, and we have the dollar right now to pay for Brother Franz, why don't we go for temporary dice slots? Maybe, just maybe, we can make this pan out for a really good round to get a whole bunch of victory points. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's go ahead and take our chances and take a temporary dice slot. Now we get to go over to the blue player, and this is where I realized I forgot to finish the guardian step. Now it's finished. So now over here for the blue player, I think now we are going to go ahead and use Father Omari. I think using Father Omari at this point is actually a really good choice because if we use Father Omari, maybe we can start fulfilling some of these things we need. So let's go ahead and use Father Omari right here, which means we are going to roll some dice and hopefully have a little bit of luck on our side. So green, yellow, red, blue. Let's go ahead and resolve those. So the three is going to be a double R. We can use that. So let's go ahead and satisfy that condition right there. This right here is going to be a double F. Heck, we can use that also. Let's go ahead and satisfy that condition right here, right now. Next up we're going to have is a upper and lowercase g. Wow, this is almost Okay, not almost, this is very, very awesome. We will go ahead and use that. Father Omari is just magical this game. I have never seen this kind of luck with Father Omari. This is actually just working out fantastically. Double T would be right there. Can we use that? Wow, we actually, thanks to Father Omari, we just completed all the traits for a plant or a garden. With one action pawn, we managed to complete a complete garden plot. That is actually really darn good. That worked out perfectly. Back to the purple player. I think the purple player for their turn, they are just going to take the temporary dice slot. Over to white, they are also going to take a temporary dice slot. And then finally, going back over to blue, temporary dice slot kind of sounds decent, but we are going to get first choice when it comes to the research upgrades. And looking at the research upgrades, I am thinking since all of them, except for one, pretty much just cost $1, we can get any research upgrade we want. But, can we get two? We could get two. Dice slot, new plot. Well, a dice slot would be great, and the assistance would be great, because there's actually three very, very nice assistants out there right now. So Sister Elizabeth allows us to immediately validate something matching our phenotype, which means that if we have a research token out there, we can immediately meet a requirement, which would be very, very nice. Then we have over here, which is gonna be Sister Marie. Sister Maria, when taken and die, we can immediately mutate it. Really good, but it's a little bit late in the game for that one, but still not too terrible. And then finally we have, who is that? That's gonna be Sister Anna. So Sister Anna is actually pretty darn good too. We can pay a coin to validate any trait. Would have been really good to have earlier in the game, but we can actually get one action out of her and score victory points. I think going for her would probably be our best bet right now. Plus for that final round, we want another dice slot because we have lots of traits that need to be fulfilled. So. I think with our last action token, we are going to, oh boy, this is tough. See, double F, we need double F. It's a difficult one to get. We're going for that. It's gonna give us a dollar. I think that is the best decision for us. That is all the actions for all of our players, for all the action pawns for all of our players. Now it's time to take all of our players and go into the plant breeding phase for all of our players. So the first thing we do for the plant breeding phase is we start rolling all the dice.
So let's go ahead and figure out what traits we have managed to get. We have one mutation here. Let's see, the two is going to be here. The three will be there. And then the four will also be there. Okay, moving over here to red, there is one mutation here. The twos and the threes will go right there. This will be the one. This will be the two and the three. And there are the fours. Let's see, mutation. Twos and threes. And then the four. So, blue player gets to do the shift work, the first shift first, and we look at everything they need over here and any of the reds, which is the double F. Unfortunately, they did not get the double lowercase f, but they did get the uppercase. Do they go for money? Money is very, very tempting right now. I mean, of course they could mutate. Do we have the slots for it? Oh, that's a tough one. Is it worth it? I think we're gonna mutate. We will take this and this, which takes up both of these dice slots right here, and we will add them onto our board. And when we take that, we are gonna cover the double F. There is our action pawn, and now we get to do this in player order, so we get to start with the purple player over here. They need to figure out exactly what they need. What is going to be highly, highly contested? This is gonna be highly contested, isn't it? It is highly contested. So we will take that and worth the same amount of victory points, but can this one be done? Both of those can be this one. Ooh, anybody else need double G? Nobody else needs double G. So let's take that right there. Over to the white player. White player is gonna go for the blue because we see that that is a little bit more challenging to get. So we will take this, which is the upper and lowercase r. We'll place this right here and we will claim that right there on that trait. Next up is going to be the blue player. Things are looking tough. Do we want to do a denial tactic? I think we're going to do a denial tactic. Because we see that white needs the double lowercase t. And there's only one left. We see that Purple needs the double lowercase t, and as we've already shown, there's only one of those left. So why don't we take the mutation and the double lowercase, just to be super duper mean, we will take both of those dice, just like that, and we will turn them through mutations into a double uppercase t. Again, that's really more of a denial tactic, but again, denial is a good strategy sometimes. So back over here to purple who is now grumbling because their move just got taken from them. They're actually staring daggers over at the blue player. So we'll refill, fulfill this trait right here. We'll take this die right here, which allows us to do so. Place it on our board and a double G is taken. Now we get to go over here to white. White is pretty much guaranteeing that they're gonna use brother fronds here. It's almost a foregone conclusion, but we have temporary dice slots, so let's not get into that just yet. I think we're gonna use a mutation right now. So we will use the mutation right here. We will claim this dice and this die right here, taking up both those slots, but at least that fulfills this requirement right there. Get to go back over to blue. We see it doesn't have any dice slots back, so let's go ahead and go back over to purple, who still has two dice slots left. And they also have a mutate card, which could be very, very handy here. I think we're gonna use the mutate card. Or do we need to use it? No, we don't need to use it quite yet. Let's save our options. So let's go ahead and claim the die over here, which is gonna be the lower and the uppercase T. We will take that, move that over to our board right here, and that will satisfy the trait for that card right there. That's another eight victory points for us. We now get to go back over here to blue, or I'm sorry, to white, who has a whole bunch of blue dice in front of them. Let's see here, we need double F, lowercase t. We can still get that lowercase t, 
but is it smarter? I think I have a smarter idea because I think if we can get this garden plot taken care of, that'd be better for us. So let us take this right here on our temporary dice slot and we will fulfill that trait right there. That's some victory points for us. Again, blue can't do anything anymore, so it's back over to the purple player right here. What do we want to do? How do we score the most amount of victory points here and do the most cool stuff? I think we're going to use the rake. We will burn the rake, sending the rake over here to the discard pile, which allows us to mutate a die. We will mutate this die right now and make it a lowercase double R, allowing us to fulfill this trait right there. Again, that's an impossible trait right now unless we do any modifications on the Punnett Square, so I'm actually okay with that. That's gonna be 11 victory points so we fulfill it. No more dice slots left. Oh, actually we do have one dice slot left, so let's go back over to the white player right now. And the white player is going to take this over here, which allows me an upper and a lowercase t going over there. Place that right here on our other temporary dice slot that we purchased. That means that we fulfilled that gardening right there. And now we get to go back over to purple. What does purple need the most? Purple is going to take this die right here and we'll place this on our last temporary slot and we'll fulfill that trait need right here. Now we go over to white. White is gonna burn a dollar. They will pay for Brother Franz with that dollar. And that means Brother Franz is unlocked. That means we've unlocked two dice slots. Very first dice slot will be right here. And we will fulfill that trait right here. And then with the second dice slot, we will fulfill that trait right there. And again, we just fulfilled two more plants. That was actually a really good team, a really good turn for all of our players who actually managed to fulfill a lot of needs. That was actually really darn good. Let's go over to the research upgrade stage. And that is gonna start with the blue player. So, blue is liking. Blue has a good idea. Blue is going to spend $1 to hire an assistant. That means the hire assistant price is now up to 2 And we will take Sister Elizabeth. Now we get to go over to the white player who has no money. So now we get to go over to the purple player, and I am thinking taking one more dice slot would actually be a very good idea because we have one, two, three, four, five traits to fulfill. We only have four dice slots, and I'd rather would not buy the temporary slots unless I really, really need to. So spend that. We will take one more dice slot, putting us at a total of five dice slots. I think that actually works out really, really well for us. That's it for that because nobody else has any money worth spending. Well, I guess technically I, should, I lied blue could buy a new plot there's no reason for them to do so though at least not for the fun around at least not away things i'm looking at right here so let's go ahead and just move over to the end of the round reset and do that very very quickly nine victory points nine victory points 10 victory points 11 victory points last tools for the last round a flower pot i don't think anybody's really going to go for the flower pot a pollen brush that can be very nice oh the garden line that's a good way to get some money oh that could be very good and a pollen brush so the only thing left to do is for us all to get their action tokens back and move the dice back onto the punnet squares and then we will start the final round of the game moving to the final round of the game we're going to start with the white player and the very first thing they are going to do is they are going to head to the nursery i think because they're about to get two cards when they do the gardening step and i think the nursery would be great although it would be also good to set some research goals which could also get the victory points but they do not have any money to do so so if we want to do that we're going to need money so let's get some money so now that we have some money, we can set some research goals. So heading over to the blue player who is next in line, for them, they actually have a couple interesting things they can do. The first thing they are going to do is they're going to head to the university. Now by heading to the university, remember if we spend $1 to the university, we can immediately finish off a trait and finish off that trait seems like a really darn good idea to me because now if we head to the gardening phase, two more cards are going to be scored for us which is always good more victory points so let's head over to the purple player right here and figure out what they want to do for the turn and they want to 
Well, we got lots of dice slots. We actually have lots of options with a purple player. How do we want to do this best? Thinking that we want to open up as many options as possible. And the first thing we want to do is possibly, if we can win the race to the set research goals, because we actually have a lot of cards that have been completed. We've completed five cards so far. Not going to get the R trait, but we could go for... That's, that's six points right there. It might be worth it for that also. I can turn two money into six victory points at least. So, if that's the way we're going to work on this, let's guarantee we can do this. Let's get first choice. Let's get some money. Next, we're going to go back over to the white player. And for the white player, we're going to take the gardening action. But before we take the gardening action, we want to take the nursery action. So that way we have a lot of cards available to us. So let's take the nursery action. Let's look at some cards that do not look like they're going to be too darn difficult to complete. We'll add those over here. And finally, we'll go over to blue. And blue is just going to take the gardening action. So let's go ahead and take the gardening action right now. First thing we will do is we will lay claim to a card. Let's claim this one. Feeling a little bit lucky with this card. So let's see if it pays off. There are some victory points for us. There are some more victory points for us. And now let's plant our garden and hopefully this will work out for us. I think it might. At least I have high hopes it will. Back over to the purple player. I think that we are also going to take first shift over here. I think that is our best option right now. Again, let me check the cards that we have here. We know that this trait is locked in, which was unfortunate because that could have been some good victory points for us. But let's see here. We could two, four, six, eight victory points by locking in that trait. Yes, we are going to lock in that trait right there, I think. That's probably the best thing to do. So there's something we're going to take the gardening action. And before we take that, let's see if we want to claim any cards. We have two cards right here. So let's look at what we can get over there. I'm thinking money by taking the second shift card. So if we look over here at the second shift card right here, if we take second shift, our decisions are not going to be that bad. We'll still take decisions slightly out of play order, which would be nice, but it'll give us $2. Remember, $2 is victory points, and victory points gives us options. But did I want to do that that early? I actually may have. Nope, that'll work out for us. Let's just do this. So we're going to take that card. We will add it over here to our tools, and then we will harvest for victory points. We will harvest for more victory points. And then finally, we will plant our last two plants that we will probably plant this entire game back over to the blue player. Now, the final round of the game is very, very interesting because after we have taken all of our actions, there's not going to be another gardening phase. So any more traits that we fulfill are just going to be one victory point. Money is also one victory point. So that's something we need to decide of where we want to spend our money, where we want to work towards our victory points. Because we're not going to be able to take any more guardian actions, especially for all the players except for Purple. They're the only person to take a guardian action left in the entire game at this point. And for them, they want to take a guardian action to at least score this card right here. Most likely they won't be able to score that card right there unless they can figure out... No, there's no way they can do it. So, having thought about that, we know that we either want to do one of two things. One, we want to go for set research goals, which we can't do because we don't have any money. So do we want to either get some more temporary dice slots, guaranteeing that we have much more potential to fill all the possibilities on our garden plots? Or do we just want to go for money and having early decisions to make sure we can at least get the dice we need to get those victory points? So we basically have a couple different paths we can go down right now. That's what we really need to decide. I think what we are going to do is we are going to look into... We know how hard this trait is right here. Let's go ahead and guarantee that we got first choice in that because that's going to give us one money. So that's pretty much two victory points we're going to lock in for one action token. I think that's our best decision. Now we're going to go back over here to the purple player. And like I said, not much they can do. 
Well, not many choices. It would have been great if we could have filled that up, but we can't, unless there's something out there that we can use. Pollen brush is not going to work. Unfortunately, we could, well, we could university it. If we did a university, is there any other way that we can fulfill a need or a trait? Because I have two traits we need to fulfill, possible to fulfill one of those traits. The other thing we could do is if we feel like a gambler, we could, <laughs> this is a huge, huge, huge gamble. I could go to the tool shed and hope for a watering can. If I get the watering can, then I am set. I could get this trait fulfilled and then I could also pay to get that trait fulfilled with my remaining two actions. That, in my opinion, is a huge, huge gamble that I do not like. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go for solid, really good, solid victory points, and we're going to go ahead and set a research goal. So we go ahead and look at all of our cards here. Let's figure out which research goal would be best for us, because it's going to cost us $2, basically two victory points, and we want to gain as many victory points as we can. So we see the double R is not an option for us because the white player has already taken it. We see that single F would be three victory points. This right here would be four victory points and that won't be fulfilled. So that's gonna be four victory points for us. No, actually that'd be six victory points if we did that. We see that this would be two victory points. Actually four victory points because we'll fulfill that. That right there would be two, four, six victory points. So do we go for I think we're gonna go for the six victory points on the F. So let's spend the $2 right here. We will lay claim to the set, the research goal down there. And then once we set the research goal, we are gonna lay claim to this. Now this means that every plant that we complete that has this trait or this trait is gonna be worth two victory points. That's every single one of these cards. So that's two, four, six victory points. Can't get that, otherwise I would have been eight. But still we're getting two victory points are gonna turn into six because money's worth the victory points on a one-for-one -one basis, so that's gonna work out for us. And we still have one action pawn left to go, so let's figure out what we wanna do. But first, let's go back over to the white player who still also has one auction pawn left. So this, as a temporary die slot, could be a victory point. We got the money for the slots. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a second shift. I think taking a second shift is the best choice because that's going to give us $2. So we'll head down to taking second shift over here. We will discard the garden line right over there and that will give us $2 instantly. So that one action right there does give us $2, which is basically two victory points. I actually like that. That actually works out good for us. I'm actually happy with that decision. Finally, over to the blue player who is going to go back to the life of gambling because this has been paying off for him. And I'm having fun with it. So, reroll the X. And let's go ahead and resolve these and see if we can use any of these dice. That was not a four, was it? I don't think that was a four. Darn it, that flipped over and I don't remember what it was. I'm going to reroll it because it flipped over and I know it was not a four. Okay. It wants to be an X really bad. It's a one. Okay, that's a one, and then that will be a four. Let's go ahead and resolve these and see exactly what they will be. So this is going to be an upper and lowercase r. Can we use it? Yes, yes we can. This right here is gonna be a double uppercase. Wow, if only we had a guardian action left over, that would actually be phenomenal. We could guard on that six victory points right here, right now. So far, it's just one victory point. So this is gonna be double G, we cannot use that. This is gonna be double lowercase t, cannot use that. So that one action pawn just gave us two victory points, which is pretty darn good. I think that actually worked out in our benefit. So that is all the action pawns for everybody except the purple player who has one action pawn left over. And again, we're back at the option to garden for eight victory points. So before we do that, let's see what we want to do. We know we're gardening. We know we are going to garden. But do we take a chance of getting that watering can? Or do we take the chance of having more stuff from the nursery because we're going to get rolls because we have five slots? Okay, we're gonna take a plant. I don't like that one. 
Actually, I do like that one because of the double R. We'll take this plant. We will go ahead and harvest this plant right here. We will plant that plant right there. And then we're hoping that this is going to pan out for us. And now let's go ahead and roll all the dice for all of our players or for all of our gene types and figure out exactly what kind of genes we're going to get. So we'll place all the dice out on the board. The two will be a upper lower. The threes will be upper upper. The four will be upper lower. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, three, and four. So now remember, we get to resolve these by first shift, and don't forget we're gonna have a second shift, then we have to go by player order. So let's go ahead and start with blue, who needs to figure out if they need a double R or this, and we know the answer is this. They actually technically need that, but they don't have a way to get it. Although, you know what I made a mistake? I forgot to use Sister Elizabeth. Darn it, that's right. That's the one thing I wanted to do with my money earlier was use Sister Elizabeth. Completely forgot about that. It's kind of the hard thing about playing three different sides because you kind of are trying to play everybody well. Sometimes you forget exactly what your action was for your turn. Oh well. So let's take this right there. And that will be worth at least one victory point at the end of the game. Remove that. We will move over to purple. Dollar, which is a victory point. Or this, which is a victory point. We'll take that which will be a victory point for us. Whoops, that is not what I needed to do. That was actually purple. So let's take that back and figure out exactly what we were trying to do here. Sorry, purple is doing this. So we need the double G. That's what we need is this one right here. That will go like that. And then we will take this back. And then over here for purple again, we will take this and that will fulfill that need. Okay, so that is it. So now we get to go to second shift, which means white gets to go first and pick anything out of the remaining from any color row that they want. Which one is going to be the hardest to get? I'm thinking this is going to be the hardest one to get. So let's take that and that. Now we get to do this in player order, which means white gets to go again. I think it will go here, and that will be double F for right there. Now we go to blue, who has three open slots. I think we'll take that for that. White has three open slots. We will take this for that. Let's see here. White. We will take this for that. Back over here to blue. Two slots available. We will take this for this. Back to purple. We'll take this for that. Back to white. We will spend the dollar. One dollar will turn into two victory points. So lose a victory point to gain two victory points. And we will take this for that. One more for blue and they will go here for that. Purple has one more slot and they will take this for that. And then finally, white, is there anything else they can use? They're hoping there is. And there is, so that actually worked out for them. So that is the complete plant breeding phase for all of our players. And since this was the final round of the game, we skipped the research phase and we completely move on to the final scoring for the end game. So let's go ahead and score all the points and for all of our players and figure out exactly who is the winner of Genotype.
So let's go and have all the victory points for all of our players and we will start with the purple player. The first thing we will do is we will figure out all the completed cards that we have. So we have 12 plus 8 is 20 plus 7 is 27. 34, 40, 48 total victory points and we will mark that right here on our little chart right there. And we're going to do this one phase at a time to kind of help build the tension so we don't know exactly who's winning because it'll be more fun this way, at least for me. So we got 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 8 is 24, 31, 39 victory points in completed cards. So let's mark 39 victory points. Over here to blue, this could be scary, 19, 31, 41, 51, 62. We'll talk about smiling all the way to the victory point bank. Let's see if everybody else can make up the difference in victory points here. So now the next thing we are going to figure out is if anybody has managed to get any research goals. So purple did a research goal and white did a research goal. Now to figure out the research goal, we will start with purple who is looking for any F type gene type or traits, sorry. There's one for two victory points. That one doesn't count, it's a wrong trait. There's another two for four victory points. There's another for three for a total of six victory points. That puts us at 54 victory points. Next up, we'll go over to White, who also managed to get all the R's. So let's see if they have any R's in their successful gene types. Nope. There's one for two, four, and three for six. And that'll be for White. So that puts them at 45. Still trailing just a little bit, but things are not over for all of our players. So the next thing we need to figure out is there anybody who has incomplete research. So incomplete research, we will see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that'll put them all the way up to here for 61. Incomplete research, one, two, three, four, five, six. That puts them at 51. And then finally over here for incomplete research, one, two, Three, four, five, six puts them at 68 victory points. Now, the only thing we need to figure out is any unspent coins. Well, the only player, well, no, actually, two players have unspent victory more coins. One, two, three, right there. And then one, two, th one coin right here puts them right there. So, our grand scores for all of our players is blue has 69. White has 54, and then purple has 61. So the point spread is actually eight. It's about eight between all our players. Just, well, actually, if I want to be really technical, eight and seven between first, second, and third place. So this has been a complete games play for the game of Genotype. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I will definitely get to them as quickly as I can. You also feel free to email me at off the shelf board game reviews. That's OTSBGR gmail.com. Be sure to get your email as quickly as I can. If you enjoy the content I put out there, this channel works pretty much on the honor system. If you enjoy the content, I've helped you save a few bucks or help you spend your gaming dollars wisely. Think about tossing a tip over in the tip jar over on Patreon. Just one dollar in the tip jar can help me cover my costs and help keep this channel growing strong. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this video series, click that like button, click that subscribe button because your subscriptions do matter here. And thanks for watching.